we're going to take a step back to chapter 8. Uh, you're not going to be asked to reread it. You're not going to be asked to redo those formatives you already did for that. We're going, I want to take a different look at it. Not so much from the chemistry, how to build glucose and how to use ATP, how to build ATP, but more about how organisms obtain energy because that's what we're going to be leading into uh, for the remainder of the year. So how organisms obtain energy uh, from the environment and from each other because the way they earn get them from each other is going to be very important about the way organisms interact with one another. So there are two major types of organisms as you are well aware uh, and if I asked you this in class you would probably say plants and animals and that would be correct uh, but we should start thinking about plants as being producers. Plants are able to make glucose using photosynthesis as we discussed uh, a lot this year. Whereas animals or consumers have to eat glucose in their food in order to survive. So we're talking about energy and if we're talking about energy we need to talk about energy in general. Uh, we know there are some laws, the laws of thermodynamics, which are laws of physics, uh, but they are going to apply to biology. They will apply to chemistry when you study chemistry. So in general energy can't be created or destroyed, but it can be changed from one form to another form. So what do we mean by that? Uh, organisms are because energy can't be created or destroyed organisms need to have a source of energy they can't make it on their own so energy has to be put in to any system and for most of our planet that energy source is going to be the Sun if we think about the energy that comes from the Sun maybe heat comes to mind first light certainly there uh, there's ultraviolet radiation coming in these are all three very uh, important and very strong sources of energy but it turns out that this light energy is the one that's most important to us as far as organisms and organisms interacting with one another so organisms though we know can't survive on light alone some organisms can use light we're going to get into that later that's part of this chapter uh, we know about photosynthesis already but none of the organisms on the planet can use light to do the daily work that they need to do you can't use light to move your muscles no organism uses light to build ATP so those eight characteristics of life that we learned about in the first chapter are not sustained by light directly but ultimately they are sustained by light because light can be used to convert to chemical energy. So how do energy organisms use energy to keep up those eight characteristics of life? Well, if you think back, you know that one of the eight characteristics was use energy. And I told you from day one, we're not going to call it use energy. We're going to say use ATP. That's one of the eight characteristics of life because when organisms use energy, they are using ATP. So we start out with a molecule, an A, with three phosphates attached to it. Though that a ATP, three phosphates attached to it, can be used to do work inside the cell. The work, uh, can be used to move a molecule maybe it's moved sodium from one side of the membrane to another and the stuff that doesn't go into directly moving that molecule is going to be lost in the form of heat or given off in the form of heat the heat is another form of energy so we've done some work we moved a molecule and when we are left with what we are left with is an ADP, an A with two phosphates attached to it, and usually an enzyme somewhere with the third phosphate attached to it, which will eventually be dropped off and just be free in the cell to be reused. So we've used ATP to do some work. We're left with ADP and another phosphate floating around. So all we have to really do is put this phosphate back onto this molecule and in order to do that we need to put back what the system lost when it took it off whoops 
And that was energy. So if you take the ADP, add some energy, you can reattach phosphate to the ADP and it'll give you ATP. That energy though is not energy of light. This is not light energy. This energy we know from previous work in this chapter is going to come from glucose. It's chemical energy. So a general description of using ATP to stay alive means we're talking about metabolism. And metabolism is all the chemical reactions in an organism or in the cells of that organism. That metabolism those chemical reactions are not powered directly by light. They're directly powered by ATP, which is built using the energy from glucose. So now we should start thinking about organisms uh, as the two types of organisms, plants, we should more correctly refer to as producers, and those producers have the ability to convert light energy into glucose. Animals are consumers. They have to find sources of glucose by eating. But whether you're a producer or a consumer, you use that glucose for the same thing. You use that glucose to make ATP so that you can carry out metabolism. All right, and then we're going to look at a review of how photosynthesis is and then we'll look at how respiration is and we'll compare the two uh, and again we're focused on organisms now not so much on the details of building glucose or the details of making ATP but why it's necessary and how organisms do that uh, I will be putting up assignments tomorrow to go with this a brief formative uh, and again it won't be the same as the formatives you did uh, on this chapter already. All right.